Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm gonna be talking about a MyPy plugin and how to do code coverage for it. Uh, I actually ran into a, a pretty annoying problem while trying to set up code coverage on a new plugin that I'm writing uh, and figured the actual answer is kind of interesting to walk through and show you what's actually going on. So let's jump into it. All right, so let me just clone it because I forgot to do that before the stream, before the stream, before the video started. Uh, the project that I'm creating is a thing called typing derive. Uh, let's just make a virtual environment uh, and get that going. Um, it's not important for this video. The thing's not completely done yet, but the idea behind it is it's going to add some helpers such as this one, typed dict from func, uh, which allows you to create type aliases from other stuff. So in this case, it makes a type dictionary that matches the signature of a function. So you don't have to write out the type dict if you're doing dynamic keyword args. Uh, but that's not the, the point of this video. The point of this video is to show how to deal with coverage in this. Uh, and typically, when you're running coverage, you'll just, you know, coverage run uh, pi test tests and then coverage report, uh, and you'll get your coverage. Um, of course, I have set up a coverage. I've set up parallel mode here because I'm actually using multiple different commands to test my particular plugin. I have unit tests, which test the actual runtime portions of it. And then I have typing tests. So we're gonna test the actual execution under my Pi. Uh, so I actually need coverage combine here as well. Coverage combine. And I should probably put coverage erase beforehand. That way we're doing everything from scratch every time. Um, and you'll, you'll notice here that I have this MyPy plugin. It's not getting called yet, obviously not getting called yet because although I don't know how, <laughs> how do you possibly have 2% coverage when every single line is missing? Hmm, it's a little strange. Uh, but the way that the plugin is actually tested is by running MyPy. And so I have my, my uh, implementation tests here and I have my uh, typing tests here. So for instance, uh, this is a test which uses a forward reference in an argument. And if you run MyPy on this, uh, python-mypy on this, uh, it exercises the plugin. And we can see that it exercises the plugin by putting a you know, breakpoint somewhere in here or whatever. Yeah, let's just put a breakpoint here. See, it runs the plugin, cool. Uh, and so if we adjust our coverage run command, we're also going to run MyPy in addition to running our tests. So we'll do coverage run dash M MyPy test typing. And that should give us our coverage, right? You know, we've set up parallel mode. We've run our two things. We know that it's running when we run MyPy, but mysteriously, these lines aren't covered. So what the heck is going on? So the first thing I was, uh, looking into is like, well, is it actually running? Let's put a raise in here and see what's happening. Raise assertion error, hello? Just to make sure, surely this is running, right? If we run it, you'll see that we get a crash, perfect. Uh, and if we put show trace back on that, you can see that, oh, trace back. Uh, we can see that it is actually our, our assertion error. So we know this code is running, but why isn't coverage working? And to understand that, uh, I dug a little bit into the MyPy code. I had an idea in the back of my head, uh, which is that MyPy is somehow uh, killing the process eagerly, but I needed to figure out how to verify that and see if there was a setting to turn it off. So let's actually undo this bit here. We know it's running. We just don't know why the coverage isn't working. Um, and so I searched through MyPy's help to see if there's something in here about like exiting or uh, I don't even know if this is documented in here at all. But there are a lot of options to MyPy. Uh, I did eventually search through the code of MyPy and I was looking for os dot underscore exit. This is the most common way to brutally kill your current process. And I noticed in here that there are some in dmypy, but that's not super useful, but there's some in mypy util os dot underscore exit and hard exit killed the current process without fully cleaning up this can be quite a bit faster than a normal exit so basically my pie is choosing to brutally kill its own process to avoid garbage collection because it's faster 
you know, the process is dying. You don't really care if you have to clean up, so might as well use OS dot underscore exit, which just kind of nukes the process from orbit. And usually, you know, usually you don't want to do this because you might have like connections open or resources in place or subprocesses or threads or all sorts of other stuff. Uh, but in my base case, it can kind of just, you know, it knows that it owns its process and hopefully there aren't plugins doing funky stuff, but for the most part, it can just nuke them from orbit. But I was like, well, is this on by default? This seems a little bit strange. We get grep around for this, this function uh, and we'll see that in my pi main, pi hard exit. Uh, yeah, there's this options dot fast exit. Uh, interestingly, I didn't see that in the help. Fast exit. Uh, oops, grep. Yeah, it's not in the help, so uh, it's a secret option. And yes, internals group. There's dash dash fast exit and there's dash dash no fast exit. So this prevents MyPy from running OS dot underscore exit. And if we add that to our crazy long command here, no fast exit, you can see that we're now getting coverage. Um, but we have another problem. <laughs> You'll notice here that we have some missing coverage. And if we look at those particular lines, I'll go to 17, you'll see that it's our deferral code. So MyPy, the way MyPy works is it can run multiple passes over your code. And sometimes it doesn't have enough information to answer the questions about the types. And so it does what's called a deferral. It'll say, uh, I don't know the full signature of this type. Hopefully if I do another pass that something will fill it out and eventually you'll have all the types. So sometimes MyPy will go through many, many passes to figure out the types of stuff. Uh, but MyPy also has a caching mechanism which can avoid some of these deferrals uh, by reusing types that it knows from a previous run. If the files haven't changed, it knows that those types are stable and it can just read them from the cache. So what I guessed that was happening here, and I ended up being uh, correct again, is that this is not, we're not going through any deferral phases because MyPy can utilize its cache, and so it's not having to do this multi phase. Uh, um, resolution here. Oh, also the most common case for deferrals here are either like forward references, things where you're trying to figure out the type signature of something at the top of the file, and then it's actually defined at the bottom file. We actually showed a test earlier that should go through this deferral pass as well. Uh, another one is circular imports, which technically you can get away with in some situations in Python, uh, but the type checker, you know, has to break a cycle at some point, and so it uses deferral mechanism, the deferral mechanism to resolve those types there. And so it'll eventually figure out what the types are after you know, a second or third pass. Um, and so this is important, and particularly I have extra special code here because there's a bug in MyPy where the particular hook I'm using does not actually support deferral. You have to do a little bit of extra work to make sure that deferral works correctly. Uh, actually, added this to Django stubs a long time ago because it had this exact bug. Um, and now, <laughs> fun, fun, I'm dealing with the same bug in my project, yay. Um, but testing deferral is important, and so we need to actually run MyPy without the cache involved. And I don't remember the option for it, but, oh, no incremental, there we go. <laughs> and so if we add no incremental, we should finally have 100% test coverage. Hooray, we did it, cool. Um, but yeah, what I wanted to show here and like kind of the interesting thing that doesn't, it isn't necessarily specific to MyPy, but in this MyPy case, we needed those two options, uh, is that coverage when uh, the process is brutally terminated, either through a signal or through OS dot underscore exit, uh, it doesn't get to run its little cleanup code at the end, so it doesn't write out the coverage data. Because uh, basically the, co the way coverage works is it, you know, at the beginning of the process, it sets up some stuff, and at the end of the process, it collects all the data and writes it to its little coverage file, uh, and that's how it records what got run. Uh, anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.